Hi guys, what's up people? What's up family? Happy Sunday. So I hope your weight loss is going good. Uh, thank you so much for all the love on my shorts, my long videos, everything. Voting on the battle, the dresses. I appreciate you guys for being tapped into the community. So today is video 13. So if you guys don't know this, I create a video every day. I post daily. Okay. I post a motivational video daily to make sure you keep your mind set correct. Okay. You got to keep your head in the game because a weight loss journey is not easy. Okay. It's not just as, oh, you got to eat right and you have to work out. If your mind is not in it, you're going to fall off the track and we won't hear from you. Okay. So we'll get to a part where I do more workout videos here on the channel. But in the meantime, I truly want to talk to you guys so that you are constantly locked into your goal. Okay. I said my goal was to get 50 people to the finish line, including myself. So that makes it 51 all together. So today's video, I'm doing this improvised, but it's really important. I was just watching a video from this guy. He has a finance channel. You guys know him. He's white. He's into real estate. I can't really think of his name, but he makes lots of money, real estate videos, and he gets paid like crazy. So he had a young guest come on. She's a YouTuber and she moved out of her parents' house. And for me, from having listened to what she said, technically she ran away. Okay. And so they asked her, she's been living on her own since she's 15. I think she's 20 now. She's a YouTuber. She has like 3 million followers, subscribers on YouTube. I guess she makes a lot of money, whatever. But I'm not the type. I'm not the type of person to judge success based on money. Because if you guys don't know this right now, there's this huge controversy in like the fitness bodybuilding universe because there's a man who goes by Liver King. I'll do a video on that later too. And he has been lying to people. He told people he was natural, come to find out the men's on steroids, right? And he reached out to a coach who is good with creating like steroid plants because there's a way to do it. You can't just inject random stuff into your body. It's kind of like a diet of steroids. So you got to have this portion of that, many grams of this and that and that. So he reached out to the man and he said, this is who I am. I've seen your work. I like your work. I want to get my body to look like this and I want to get a million followers within this specific period on Instagram, right? So the man made him all kinds of cocktail. He got the body he wanted and he sure did get over a million followers on Instagram. So, and he made a lot of money deceiving people that, oh, he only eats liver, you know, like this very carnivore, like it's very carnivorous type of diet, liver, hearts. I mean, you name it. He even made his kids eat that nasty stuff. You know, not that it's nasty to eat liver, but he was eating it raw. Now, that part to me is nasty. Um, okay, because liver is good. If you know how to cook it, it's really good, right? So I don't measure success solely on money because a lot of people don't have integrity, right? Today, you have girls like Batty Baby, you know, who can make all kinds of money. Social media has allowed foul people, low vibrational people, low vibrational plates carrying people, outrageous people, immoral people, violent people, criminal people, drug selling people to make so much money, right? So I don't really look at money as a way to gauge how successful somebody is because to me, success is it's a whole thing right? Money is just a component of it. If you make money by killing people or you make money promoting perversion or encouraging people not to have morals, you can keep your money because that stuff, you don't have to pay for it. It's not free. Okay. So the young lady, she, in my view, when I listened to it, she ran away. Right. So what she said, and she couldn't even tell the story, right? I'm like, you see, this is all your problem. Because if you do something, you should have convictions behind it. Right. And now you're an adult. So as an adult, you should be able to say what really happened. She's like, well, uh, uh, uh. so pretty much here's what I got. You know, when people talk, there's what people say and there's what people truly mean to say. So you really got to listen up and you have to have a spirit of discernment. So pretty much her dad was on her butt because she's Asian and, you know, she's from an Asian household. Right. Which is no different than being from a black household, whether you're black, American, black, uh, uh, Afro-Latino, black, Caribbean, uh, black African, you know, like, you know, whether you're Indian, Pakistani, like, listen, minority households, they run a tight ship. It is what it is. Like, it is what it is, right? So her dad was on her butt because she wasn't cleaning behind herself. She was not cleaning her room. 
right? So I guess it was like they got into it and that was like, okay, well, if you don't like the rules, then bounce. So she packed her bags because I'm sure they're immigrants, they're Asian immigrants. So most likely they live in a predominantly Caucasian neighborhood, right? So she probably went to, a, and she said it was a school, it was very small. You grew up with other people. So most likely the other kids that were around her were Caucasian kids. So, and you know, Caucasian culture is very different, right? Caucasian culture, Caucasian households are very different than black households, minority households, right? And our households over here, children don't tell the parents what to do. That's just how it goes, right? So she gets upset. She goes to school. She never comes home. She goes to a friend's house. She stays at the friend's house. So the, the friend also is 15, just like her. So that's why I'm like, I can already, I can assume that her friend was Caucasian. Okay. Now, if you're Caucasian, not to be offensive, but I could assume because a black mama would be like, okay, why are you staying here? Because she would have called your parents like, hey, so-and-so wants to stay over. Can she, right? Okay. Then you want to stay here longer than a day or two. Like, no, we have to talk to your parents. Like what happened between you and your mom and your dad? Because I'm a parent, they're a parent. There's no way you're staying in my house without their permission, right? Like, and no black parent about to let a child stay at their house without permission from the child's family we don't do stuff like that so I'm like, i can only assume i can I, I might be wrong but i can only assume that where she stayed were caucasian people you know and because you know for a lot of caucasian people when you discipline when you have structure they refer to it as abuse oh they're so abusive oh my gosh oh my gosh right and it's like no it's structure you know, giving a child structure, having expectation for a child, not letting a child talk to their parents crazy or call a parent out their name. Uh, yeah, that's our culture. And there's nothing wrong with our, like you do what you do. We do what we do. But one thing I cannot stand is like when people look at other people's culture, be like, well, if it's not like my culture, then it's completely wrong. No, baby. Okay. It's your culture. Don't mean I got to take it. You know, because if you live in America, you'll see that a lot. Like you'll see a lot of like, because because Caucasians tend to have most of the money, a lot of times Caucasians want to push their cultures, their way of life, their way of thinking, their way of dating, their everything onto other people's cultures. And it's like, no, you have to respect people and their culture. You might not agree with the way somebody is, this, is raising their kid. That's mine. Raise yours. You understand? Raise yours. That's what I'm saying. So she moves out, but I'm sure when she was over there, she had to clean though. So she was cleaning. And then she was like, yeah. And so I started making content on my YouTube of me cleaning my room. So I'm like, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. Wait a minute. Hold up. So you mean to tell me your daddy told you to clean your room. Your dad was on your butt because you weren't cleaning up behind yourself. And it's one thing to be a child. Like a lot, and I'm like, and one thing she's not going to say is that when she was younger, I'm sure her mom cleaned up for her, right? When she was a baby, when she was a toddler, when she was an infant, how much you want to bet her mom cleaned up for her, her mom gave her bath, her mom cooked for her, her mom went grocery shopping. They're not going to tell you none of that. They're going to sit here and try to portray their parents as evil people because now you're becoming a teenager. You're about to be an adult. Very soon, you'll have to go to college, right? And when you're away at college, you're going to have, you need structure. You have to clean your room. You have to Keep up with your assignments. You have to keep up with your quizzes. You have to read your, you have to actually read your syllabus, right? And know when your quizzes are, know when your midterms are, know when your final exams are. You need structure in your life. And that's what parents have to do. Parents have to parent. They're not over here trying to be your friend. I'm not your little friend. And I don't want to be your friend. Okay. That's not the relationship. Now, like I said, in other cultures, they want to be friends with their kids. Mm, that's on you, sis. Okay. I, even for me, Marlene, I'm not the type of parent because I have two sons, right? I'm not the type of parent who wants to be friends with their kids. No, no, we're not friends. Like stop the madness. Okay. Stop the madness because this is where lines get confused and people get disrespectful because familiarity breeds contempt. You know, one time we went to this event and I had these, it was Caucasian models there. Right. And I, I told them like, cause they were, they were under, they were teenagers. And I said, well, you know, your parents also have to come because, you know, I don't want to have underage kids without their parents. Like your parents have to come. Right. And the kid started calling his mom all kinds of B. And I'm like, what is going on here? You know, and I'm like, and she started crying. I'm like, why are you crying? You're the parent. Like boss up. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, no, you will not talk to your mom this way. I invited her here. I want her here. You say that thing to that lady one more time. It's going to be a problem. Like, who are you talking to? Like, who are you talking to? Who are you talking, like, in your mind? Like, who are you talking to? 
Like, this is crazy, right? So she's like, yeah. So when I decided to take my YouTube channel seriously, I started making content about me cleaning my room. And that's how I started, like, getting views and making money. So I said, okay, so your dad told you to clean your room. You threw a fit. You ran away at 15. You found a different household with a different culture that lets children pretty much be terrorists, right? And then... You applied the life lesson that your father was trying to put into you to create your content. And once you took your father's advice and you monetized your father's advice, you created content around your father's advice. That's where it propelled your YouTube channel. So is it just me or it's like somewhere, do you not owe your father an apology? That's number one. Number two is, should you think you're dead? I'm like, this is the same stuff that Jordan Peterson is teaching. Now, Jordan Peterson, he's Caucasian, most likely of Anglo-Saxon roots, you know, and nationality, he's from Canada, right? But J Jordan Peterson, he's very famous for having this talk where he tells people to clean their room. He's like, you have to clean your room because uh, the way your environment looks, especially your bedroom, it's a reflection of your mind. It's a reflection of like how you think, like, how, like what's going on in your head? Why are you living like this? Right. Because people who have vision, people who have structure, people who know what they want, et cetera, et cetera, their bedrooms are going to look a certain way. Right. And people who just don't care, have no routines, are not organized. They just live in, in, in pure filth. And it's the truth. It is the truth. So I'm like, so why is it when an Asian father says that he's demonized? But when Jordan Peterson says the same thing, oh, my gosh, oh, my gosh, oh, my gosh, oh, my gosh. You know what I mean? And that's crazy. So that was the impetus to today's video, right? Is to talk about do not resent having a routine. You understand? Like if you want to be successful, and also before we start, time out. Before we start, right? Let me put a disclaimer out there, right? This channel, you know, it's a weight loss channel. It's like I'm documenting my weight loss channel and trying to help some people along the way to lose weight alongside with me, Right? But this channel, though, it is not, I repeat, it is not. I will not sit here and do pity parties for people because most people here are grown, right? Most people who watch my videos are adults. Like I told you, every time I'm on the thread, anytime I'm on YouTube, I see so many videos of children with cancer at St. Jude's. And these babies are going through chemo, rehab, learning how to walk again. They're losing their hair. They can't go to school with their friends. They can't play on the playground. And these children manage to have so much courage. And these kids manage to have a smile on their faces. So I'm Arlene. I don't have the patience. Like, I, even for myself. I don't even have patience for myself. Okay? I don't have the patience for adults, fully bodied, abled adults who constantly make excuses for themselves, who constantly want people to feel sorry for them and say, oh, it's okay. Oh, it's... No, it's not okay. Because that means that you're not living a life of gratitude because there is somebody out there that has it way worse than you. There's a child out there that has it way worse than you. Do you know what I mean? And while you have time, you have opportunity, you have a fully functioning body, you don't want to take care of it. So nobody here is going to feel sorry for you, nor would I even feel sorry for myself. You know, like even like one of the reasons why when I work out, I show my belly and stuff because it helps me to take accountability. Like I have to look at what I've done to my body. Like, yes, I'm not going to put a big old t-shirt on it and then try to hide it. And then once I lose all the weight, like bam, bam, here are my abs. No, you know what I'm saying? You did this mess. You're going to have to see it. You're going to have to live in it. And you're going to have to work that thing off. Accountability. And that's what's lacking a lot in America. Because people have gotten comfortable with these tenets of, oh, feel sorry for me. Feel sorry for me. I was watching this lady, too. She let herself get to like 300, 400 pounds, right? And she's like, oh, I have to cook for my son. I have to do homework for my kid. I have to get him ready for school. I'm like, sis, save it. You're not the only woman on the planet who has to feed her child, who has to get her child ready for school, blah, blah, blah. There are mothers who have to do all of that and take the bus. You have a car. You have a car, lady. So that saves you a lot of time. There are ladies out here who got to get the kids ready and drop the kids up at the bus stop. And she's going to have to walk herself to the bus and the bus be late and she'll wait for the bus. Then she have to take three, four buses before she gets to the job. And she's going to have to deal with a mean manager. She's going to have to deal with some awful customers. Then she got to go right back home 
So don't ever sit here and feel like, oh, woo is me. I got to take care of my kids. I have to feed my kids. Because she was saying that, oh, she can't find 30 minutes to work out. I said, girl, bye. Girl, bye. Okay. There are 24 hours. You have 24 hours in a day. So that means you have 48. You have 48 times to see 30 minutes, right? You have 24 hours and you have 48 blocks of 30 minutes. And no way you go tell me that from the time you wake up until the time you go to sleep or whatever, you couldn't find 30 minutes. Even if it's like, okay, I'll do, I'll do 10 minutes, I'll stop. Then later on, another 10 minutes, or you can do 30 minutes straight. You can do three blocks of 30 minutes. You can do five blocks of six minutes. You just don't want to do it because it's uncomfortable. Well, guess what? Growth is uncomfortable, right? Changing yourself is uncomfortable, Becoming a better version of yourself is uncomfortable. And this is why you have so many people out here now want to teach, oh, let's do soft discipline, gentle parenting. Da -da. You're going to do your children at the service. I don't think you should abuse children, beat the kids, torture children. You're a monster. But I do think parents have to instill structure in their kids. And a lot of times when you see parents who advocate for gentle parenting, soft parenting, a lot of those parents themselves, they lack routines. They don't have structure themselves. They don't. Because if you are a parent that has, if you are a successful person, if you are a successful person, you know dang well the reason why you're successful, because you have structure, because you have routines, because you set goals for yourself, because you have vision for yourself. Nobody is randomly successful. I know that sometimes the internet can make it seem as though people can just roll out of bed and be famous. But even people who are famous for stupidity, they have a plan to be stupid. They're not stupid. You understand? Like even when you like even people you think are famous for nothing, they had a plan to give to society what society is looking for. People are not that dumb. They might seem dumb to you, but they're not dumb. Just like when I was growing up, we had Jessica Simpson. And when Jessica Simpson had her reality TV show on MTV, one day she was sitting there with Nick Lachey and she was like, oh, she was eating tuna. And she was like, oh, chicken of the sea. Where's chicken of the sea? Like she act like she was stupid. Oh, she's blonde and stupid. Jessica Simpson is not stupid. That was a character, a persona that her father forged, like this whole plane to this whole stereotypical, like, oh, she blonde, so she's slow. The girl's not slow because Jessica Simpson would go on to build like the shoe empire, making $200 million a year. A stupid person cannot build a $200 million a year a shoe brand. No, she's not stupid. Now, she understands that to get to get people to watch the show, you have to be dumb or you have to be ditzy, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, sure. But she's not stupid. She's smart. She understands show business. And once she gets the eyes, when she gets people to watch her show, she gets the money, she gets the endorsement. She started building her brand. She started coming up with Jessica Simpson shoes. And they used to have them all around these stores, right? forgot the store we used to go baker's baker shoe store child they used to have the jessica simpson shoes Child, people used to buy these shoes back to back to back to back right but she's not stupid successful people have a plan like even yesterday i was watching a video on nick avocado this young lady made a video about him right i started crying too i'm like how do you let yourself get this way but over the course of five to six years though nick had a plan with the mukbangs once he saw success with that he went full force and he recognized, like, oh, they're going to make fun of me. They're going to cuss me out. But guess what? They're going to watch, though, right? And then he sold a T-shirt called, it, the T-shirt, his merch, it, it was saying, like, I identify as skinny. He sold 16,000 units and made almost $500,000 in a day selling T-shirts, right? He built his audience to, like, 1 million plus subscribers on YouTube, right? He has created merch. He has made a whole lot of money. He has damaged his health to make the money, but he had a plan. So even like those people too, they have plans. So it's like nobody who is successful is successful without a plan. But it's not enough to have a dream. It's not enough to have a plan. You also need to have a routine. You need to have a structure in place, right? That every day you put forth the work so that one day this dream, this plan can come to fruition. You actually have to work. You have to work. You know, life requires us to work. Life requires us to be uncomfortable. You understand, if you look outside in nature, especially for those of us who live, you know, in cold climates or whatever, right? Animals are constantly migrating. You don't think it's uncomfortable for them to have to move every four to six months? 
You know what I'm saying? Oh, winter is coming. They can't just stay. They have to go. Some of these birds have to fly for hours and hours, miles and miles and miles. You don't think, you don't think that's a huge inconvenience for them? You know what I'm saying? Like everybody's inconvenience. Everybody has stuff going on. Everybody has something to do. Everybody. You're not unique. There are countless of mothers who wake up an hour early and start working out before their kids wake up. You're not unique. And I think a lot of times what gets people in trouble, right? And what gets people to feel sorry for themselves or to completely um, give up on taking action because people think they're so unique in their, in their plight. No, that's ego. <laughs> You're not unique. You know, and when you ever get to a point where you feel as though you are the, oh my gosh, this is the worst thing ever. Maybe you need to broaden your horizons. Maybe you need to watch more stuff on YouTube, be more on TikTok, Instagram. I don't know. Maybe you need to like, you know, consume more content, reach out to other people and you'll see, or maybe you should volunteer. How about that? Volunteer at a homeless shelter, volunteer at the hospital. So you can see with your own eyes that there are people who have it way worse than you. And that will help you to realign your paradigm. Like, dang, like, you know what? I'm going to stop complaining. Because we all have 30 minutes to do better. We just don't want to. Because we resent having routines. We resent having to, you know, actually work on time management. A lot of people don't want to work on time management. But if you start working on time management, you'll see that you do have pockets of 20 minutes here, 30 minutes here, 15 minutes here right? It's nothing to turn on Grow With Joe and do a 15 minute workout with Grow With Joe. It's nothing to turn on MadFit, right? And do a, a 10 minute ab exercise with MadFit. You know, you can do three different exercises throughout the day. You can do one for 10 minutes. You can do another one for, for 15. That's 25. And then you can stretch for five minutes. That's 30. You can't tell me that you don't have five minutes to stretch your body. Like That is not possible. That's not possible. But if Love Island came on, you have time for that, right? When um, Love Island, whatever they do over there in the UK, you got time for that. When they have that stupid show on Netflix, Love is Blind, you'll sit here and binge watch the entire show. But then somebody says, okay, why don't you walk for 30 minutes? Oh my gosh, my kid, my this, my that. Girl, save it. Save it. We ain't trying to hear it. I know I'm not trying to hear it, okay? So my channel is truly about people taking accountability but like, you know what, Marlene, you're right. I can do better. We, and that's for me too. We can all do better. I was watching the show and I was like, you know what? Instead of just sitting here watching the show, I could just go on the treadmill and watch the show. So I got up and started getting ready because I'm like, okay, I'm going to watch the rest of the show on the thread. So Because I can watch it because it's about 45 minutes. Instead of just sitting there on the bed and watching the show for 45 minutes, I can just go to Planet Fitness, walk for 45 and watch the show for 45. Bum, 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 bum. <laughs> bum, 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 bum. And it's done. Like this, like that, okay? Like this, like that, you know? But you have to be, you have to be someone who has routines. If you wanna be successful, not just your weight loss, your finances, your marriage, your, your job, your career, right? Routines are very important, you know? You have to have routines for yourself and you have to compel yourself to follow your routine. At first, the first day is horrible. The second day, like, man, why am I doing this? But eventually, you're going to appreciate the fact that you do have a routine, right? And it makes you more efficient. It makes you more efficient with your time. Just like when you go to the gym, you should have your workouts planned, right? On Sundays, you could take two to three hours. It might not even take you that long, but at maybe at most two hours, right? And plan what you're going to eat for the rest of the week, right? You can at least plan what you're going to eat for the next four days. So that you prepare yourself, on, if, you, if you have to go to the grocery store, you prepare yourself, on, okay, what does my grocery list have to be like, right? You look around the house, look around the pantry, what do you have, what do you not have? Make the list, buy, right? And then you come home, you meal prep, because now you know the meals that you have to make for the next four days or for the next week. It's going to make you so efficient. And not just that, it's going to remove so much friction for you. Because the days you, oh, I'm lazy, I'm not lazy, that's fine. It's already made. It's already meal prep. See that? So on days that you are tired, on days that you do feel lazy, on days that you're just not into it, you're not going to reach for junk food or for foolishness because why? the food is already ready. Because the days that you feel good, the days that you have energy, you actually use those days to meal prep. 
it like it's not that hard right like to be successful it like you have to be prepared but to be prepared also you have to know what to prepare right and that's by having a plan by having a routine right working on time management right you don't have to work all the time but the hours that you are working how are you maximizing those hours right is by having a plan for yourself you have so many channels on on um on youtube that focus on productivity that focus on time management there's like we live in the information age and all this stuff is just free you just got to click on it then you got to take notes and then you have to implement what those people are saying Right, there's someone I really love, Ali Abdal. He's all the way in UK, right? But Ali, all his videos are about productivity, time management. You know, you have a lot of people who show you how to use um, um, Notion. <clears throat> you know, you can use Notion. You can use um, Trello. What's the one I use all the time? I can't even think of it. There's another one I use all the time, right? But there are so many ways for you to be organized, right? But you need to have routines, right? You got to decide also what day of the week are you going to um, commit to cleaning your house, clean the kitchen and clean your room and clean this and that and that, you know, doing your laundry, organizing the stuff, right? So that you are ready to have a successful week. You understand, right? And like I said before, in my other videos, you'll have parents who tell the kids, oh, go read a book. But the parent is on the phone gossiping. Or the parent is constantly watching reality TV and the child has to see people fighting on TV, yelling, screaming, throwing stuff on TV. But then you tell this kid to go read or go do the homework. But your, your child is looking at you like you're a hypocrite. You understand? So when you live your life like this, structure, discipline, clean environment, cleaning room, clean bathroom, the house is smelling good, the kitchen is, is looking good, right? When you live your life like that also, your kids are watching you. You know what I mean? Like, wow, okay, cool. There's what you say and then there's what you do. And then you show the young people that, let's see, if you want to be successful in life, first it starts with you. First it starts with your mindset, right? First it starts with your house. Before you can impact the world, before you can impact your community, before you can impact your neighborhood, you got you to gotta live in a clean house, okay? You got to live somewhere that has structure, right? You got to have structure about yourself. You understand? Do not resent having routines. You need a routine. If you are going to be successful at losing weight, you need structure. You need routines. You need to set goals for yourself, right? You might not always hit the goals, but you have to set goals. They don't have to be super crazy. Oh, I got to lose 10 pounds this month. No, your goal could be, okay, I got to make it to five pounds, right? So five pounds is like, how many calories is that? Because one pound is 3,500 calories, right? So that's 15, blah, blah, blah. okay, so that's 17,500, right? So you have to burn, you have to lose you know, five pounds, so you have to burn 17,500 calories more. Okay, how am I going to achieve that? All right, I'm going to drink my water. Do you have enough water ready? Do you have the proper water bottle, right? Do you have what you need to make sure you can drink your water? Make sure you have that. I'm going to meal prep. Okay, before you start meal prepping, you need to find out what your daily maintenance calories are so that you meal prep according to your maintenance calories. So let's say for you to lose five pounds this month or five pounds next month, you have to eat 2,000 calories. Okay, so once you have that number, meal prep accordingly. You understand what I'm saying? Do you what do you have the stuff, the ingredients that you need to create your meals so that you have those 2,000 calories every day so that you can be successful? You understand? What's the goal? Five pounds. Okay, that's 17,500. Okay, so water intake, meal prep, okay, and then exercising. You might, okay, maybe this week you'll work out four, four to five times a week. Now, when I say four, four to five times a week, every week, every day doesn't have to be intense, right? Even on days of active recovery, it doesn't mean you stay, oh, I got to rest. On your rest day, you can still walk. <laughs> you don't have to be in bed, okay? Because a lot of people too, if you stay in bed, you're going to eat, okay? You stay in bed too long, you're going to start snacking. So there are days like, for example, you can have three days that include that are more intense because you are actually weightlifting, right? And then the fourth day, if the fourth day is your rest day, you can walk outside for a mile, right? You don't have to, it's not to be crazy. Just walk outside. Don't stay in the house and increase your likeliness to want to snack, to want to overeat because you're in this house not doing anything worthwhile. You can walk outside, right? You can jump rope, you know? 
You can, I don't know, but just go outside. You can go outside for one to two hours. Just walk around, right? You can go to your favorite mall and just walk around the mall for an hour or so, right? You can go to your favorite park and walk around, listen to music, right? So even on active recovery days, you need, you still need to move your body, right? On active recovery day, you can walk. You can also stretch. There are a lot of great stretching exercises. Um, you can also try yoga at home. You have a great channel here, which is yoga with Adrian unbelievable right so she has like beginner friendly type of yoga exercises just you know stretch your body you know open up your arms you know stretch out your shoulders you know work on your hip flexors you know just kind of like you know recovery like stretch the body you understand so do not resent having routines you need routines you need structure okay i had never like <laughs> I, I don't know. I, I don't know people who are successful who don't have routines, who don't have like their stuff structured. You know what I mean? Like, oh my gosh, that's so hard. Yeah, it's hard because you haven't done it. Everything is hard when you haven't done it. Okay. But when you do it, after a while, you get used to it. After a while, you get used to it, right? That's it. But would you rather not be somebody who implements better routines? Would you rather not be somebody who has better time management, right? And now you're way more productive. You easily, or with, it's with so much more ease that you attain your goals? Or would you rather be like, oh, I, I just wake up when I wake up. I sleep when I sleep. I eat when I eat. I work out when I work out. No, no, and no, and no, and no. That's not how a successful person conducts themselves. You can't do stuff like this, right? You can't do stuff like this. Like You have to become a better version of yourself. And to become a better version of yourself, you need to have structure. Like, so, you know, if people are upset watching this video, it is what it is, right? But hopefully you receive this message. If you don't, it is what it is. But for those that it's meant for, they're going to receive it, right? There are so many channels on here to help you with time management, to help you with productivity. Please follow those people and receive what they're saying. Take notes on what they're saying and implement the stuff they're saying. And the apps they're telling you to download, download those apps or the website they're telling you to use, use them. You know, everybody should have Gmail. If you have Gmail, you have access to everything. Like you have um, the Google Calendar, you have Google Sheets, you have Google Docs. Like you have, like Google has a lot of productivity tools and it's all free. So what's the problem? You know what I mean? What's the problem, right? If you have a hard time working out, you can't get motivated, but you have an iWatch. You can have competitions with the iWatch. You can set competitions with your friends, right? Or you can invite your friends to your iWatch so that, when you see them move, it also triggers you to start moving. There, like, there are way too many tools and apps and YouTubers and people like that who are devoted to helping people achieve their goals through consistency, goal setting, and routine having building type of skills, okay? That's how we have to live, y'all. You understand? We can't take this life for granted because you might wake up tomorrow and be dead. You understand? Somebody might wake up tomorrow and be in a car accident and boom, your legs are gone. Don't take nothing for granted because this life here, it will humble you. It will humble you. And when you sit here and just waste your days, lollygag, make excuses, I'll do it tomorrow, I'll do it tomorrow, you should be embarrassed. You should be embarrassed because what gives you so much confidence that tomorrow is guaranteed? Like what gives you so much confidence that tomorrow belongs to you? You might not be here tomorrow. That's what um, Glorilla said. I might not even mess with you tomorrow. How you know life gonna mess with you tomorrow? How you know that success gonna mess with you tomorrow? How you know that God's gonna mess with you tomorrow? You don't know what tomorrow holds. You might not even be here tomorrow. I might not be here tomorrow. None of us might be here tomorrow. So we gotta treat today seriously, right? And if you do think you'll be here tomorrow, you gotta time manage your, your, your time for tomorrow. But we gotta stop taking life for granted because you, you don't know what could happen tomorrow. You might be in the hospital tomorrow. You don't know what could happen tomorrow. So we, we can't live like that. We can't live like that. Set your goals. Set your routines. Be consistent. Clean your room. <laughs> like, <laughs> do what you got to do. Meal prep. Plan your exercises for the week, right? Plan what you're going to do in the gym. There are a lot of YouTubers also who show you their split, like how they split. Oh, Monday is back. Tuesday is legs. Wednesday is arms. Thursday is butt, like glutes, whatever, right? You got that too. On YouTube, YouTube is like a university. You can learn anything you want on YouTube. That's why they call the university of YouTube. You can learn anything you want on YouTube. Okay? The information is right there on your phone. It's right there on your TV. 
So just access the information, learn the information, apply the information, remain consistent until you can, you can find a routine that you can stick to. But stop presenting, if you are that person, stop presenting structure, stop presenting routines. Because even if you do become successful as a YouTuber, guess what? You're going to have to go back to what your father said. Clean your room. Have structure. Be organized. Because now you're a leader. Now you have a team. Now you have a staff. Now you pay people. Because now she has people she pays. YouTube manager, this manager, assistant, editor, blah, blah, blah. So when you have that many people on payroll, you can't play like that. Because they're expecting their money every two weeks. So that means you got to be consistent with your uploads. You got to keep creating content that gets the engagement, that gets the coins, right? You have to create content that still pleases your sponsors so that they can come back and pay you to, to, to shout them out in your videos. So guess what? Daddy was right. Clean your room, clean your mind, <laughs> and then you'll, you're, then you'll have the world to you. Then you'll have a beautiful life. You know what I'm saying? So I hope you guys will see this video. It's me preaching on a Sunday, but like I said, we're going to keep it 100 over here because too many people make excuses for themselves. It, it's overwhelming. And honestly, sometimes it's not. In me, it gives me nausea. Like, girl, please. Okay? Please. Whatever you can tell me about your life, I know somebody that has it 100 times worse. You know? It's always it, it's nice if it could have been better. Heck yeah. But it is what it is, right? So let's implement things that if we do follow through on... It's going to make the next week easier. Then it's like the whole month becomes easier. Then it's two months become easier. Then it's six months that become easier. Then it's a whole year. You're like, man, I've come a long way. Why? Because I started putting up a plan. Why? Because I have got better with time management. Why? Because I structured my mind better. Why? Because I clean my room. Why? Because I have more mindfulness. I have more self-awareness. Why? Because I have routines. And my routines help me to stay on track with my goals. With that being said, I'm Arlene. If you missed the other videos, please click here or here to get access to the playlist or to get access to the video before this one. See you on the Stairmaster. Bye.